Hello, you lovely eye photography people. Today, we're going to go through star trails and I'm going to use my favorite photograph that I took last year. It was when I was staying at Monument Valley and I left a, a time-lapse running overnight to sort of capture the stars. And I'm going to create a star trails photograph for you now. If you've followed the blog post and you have all of your files ready, you need to go to File, Scripts, and Load into Stack. From here, we need to find our files. And the more that you add, the more pronounced the effect will be. But the more that you add, the more taxing it is on your machine. So there is a payoff. Try with your own setup and see how well your machine copes. I'm going to do however many that is. <laughs> And when we have them in here, tick Attempt to Automatically Align Sources. This stacks everything for you so everything's in the right place. And then we press OK, and you're probably going to need to get a coffee because it takes a hot minute. <laughs> Once your images are loaded, you should see something like this. All the images here will be all in a stack. So when you get to the top and you change the visibility on each layer, you can see all the different exposures. Now, the first thing that we need to do is choose a layer for the bottom layer, the one that everything else is going to uh, be stacked onto. And this needs to be an image that has a very clear foreground. So I'm going to choose this one. And what I'm gonna do is just drag it all the way to the bottom. Now, making sure uh, all the layers are visible, we click the top layer and press Shift on our keyboard and choose every single layer except the bottom layer. And then we're going to want to change the um, filter mode to lighten. And as simple as that, you can start to see how it all works. Now your image may be a little bit too bright or a little bit too dark, but we can fix all of that. There's just one more thing to, to decide and one more choice to make. You will probably have some satellite streaks that will ruin the effect. Now you can keep them in because that's exactly how it looked when you took the image, or you can take those out. It's a little bit time consuming, but I think it's worth doing. So if you're happy to just leave it like that, we're, we're, we're golden. If you want to go back in and see where the satellites are, you can change your layers back to normal. And here's where the time consuming thing comes in. We look through each layer to try and find the streak. And there is one. We can use the magnifying glass to zoom in on it. And then we can use the spot heel tool which is this one, it looks like a little plaster. Now you might need to change the size of the brush using the panel at the top. And then what we do is we just tap along and remove. Doesn't matter if it's a bit messy because by the time all the other layers are on top of it, you won't notice quite so bad. And then we'll just zoom out a little bit. If you've got your magnification selected, you can press Alt on your keyboard to choose between zooming in and zooming out. And then you can press Space to turn it into a little hand and you can move your image around. Just really handy shortcuts to know. So we'll keep going through. I think the little ones, it's not too bad. It's just the larger ones we need to look for. So when we find another one, we make sure that layer is selected and spot heel. And then we keep looking. Mm -hmm. 
and actually it's on the final layer. That actually wasn't too time consuming, there was only three images that I needed to edit. Sometimes there'll be more, sometimes there'll be less, it really depends on what you've captured. And using the magnifying glass as well, just to show you, you can also right click and choose fit to screen if you get stuck. And as I say, your alt button will toggle between forwards and backwards. Now we just need to make all the other layers visible. There may be a quicker way to do this, but I haven't found it. And then we select all of the layers. We choose the top one and everything but the base layer, just like we did before. And this time when we choose lighten, hopefully those satellite streaks won't be there anymore. Ta-da, that's much cleaner. Now I know it's overexposed and stuff, but we're gonna work on that. We're going to go to image and flatten image. You'll be happy to know that if your machine was struggling at any point during that, this is when it'll speed up because now you're just editing the one image. You don't have to do this, but it's a good habit to get into. If you right click on your background layer and press duplicate layer, that way we're always working on a copy. So if we completely mess this up, we haven't ruined the original. It's just a good habit to get into. Now to just get this how we like it, I'm going to go to image adjustments and there's a few ways that you can do it. You could go to brightness and just turn down the brightness and boost the contrast. And as you can see, we're getting there. That's pretty good. I'm just going to undo that. That's a good way to do it. Another way to do it is to use your curves. Now, anything over here is the bright parts of the image and anything over here is the dark parts of the image. So if we pull it in in the middle, everything will get darker. And if we pull it in at the top, the highlights will get darker as well. It's the same effect, it's just a different way of achieving it. So just for ease, we're gonna use brightness. We're gonna bring down the brightness and up the contrast. And now that's looking really cool. You'll notice because we've stacked the images and they've, they've, they've gone on top of one another, there's just a little border around the edge. So we'll need to um, use the crop tool just to pull that in a little bit. I'm going to line up the horizon with the rule of thirds line. And I'm just going to attempt to straighten it ever so slightly as well. Ta-da! So this is how we make the light trails. You add in all of your layers and change all of the layers but one to lighten. The more images you add in, the more pronounced the light trails will be. If you leave your shutter open for longer when you take the images, you know, you could leave it for 60 seconds or longer if, if you have ways to do that, then you can add in fewer images and get a more pronounced effect. 